So today we're gonna to be adding a second hard drive to my MacBook Pro. Not too long ago, I put a 120 gig solid state hard drive inside it. The only problem with that is when I'm trying to do a project or working with something when I'm on the go, um, I ran out of space all the time and I had to carry around an external drive. What you can do with these Macs is remove the CD-ROM drive and install a second hard drive bay or a caddy for, for you to put a one terabyte hard drive or whatever size you want. In this case, we're gonna be installing the uh, a one terabyte blue Western Digital hard drive. Um, I went with blue. You can get the black. It's a little faster, but uh, blue one is sufficient enough. It was less than a hundred dollars, I believe. So for one terabyte um, of space, it's, it's well worth it because when you're operating a 120 gig SSD, you know if you're making a video or editing a video, there's no way you can use it. You have to carry around an external hard drive. So this makes it very convenient. There will be uh, details in the product in the description for the product. Um, there'll be a link there for pricing and details or whatever if you want to check it out. Now, of course, the main thing about this installation is the caddy. Um, there will also be a link below uh, for details and pricing on these. And this is this is amazing. You can get these for like almost any laptop. So CD-ROMs are becoming a little bit, um, or DVD burners or optical drives in general. This is Blu-ray. Blu -ray, is becoming a little bit obsolete. So a lot of times you want extra storage. Um, have two hard drives in your computer and your laptop. So check out the uh, description below for details on these. So let's begin the installation. Okay, so we're gonna first begin by flipping it upside down, of course. We're gonna take out all the screws here at the bottom. Take all of them out. I'm probably gonna fast forward this so it doesn't get very redundant. All we're doing is unscrewing a bunch of screws. Remember where they go? There's three very long screws and they go in a certain place. They're at the top. By the way, you need a small Phillips screwdriver to do this. And I forgot to fast forward the video, so you may fast forward if you wish, or just, you know, skip this part. Once all the screws are out, we're going to lift the pan right off. This is the bottom pan, or whatever that you want to call it. And uh, you see the interior of your MacBook Pro. This is the battery. We're going to unplug that before we do anything else. Now we gotta unplug these three ribbons here. They're just sitting on the, on the motherboard, they're connectors. Um, just carefully lift them up. Now we're gonna be removing a few screws. It's very hard to see. I don't like the angle I chose for this, but uh, bear with me. Um, there's uh, this screw here by the fan that has to come out okay now it looks simple it looks like you'll be able to get the CD-ROM out with just doing that but that is not the case there's a screw here by the front I'm trying to get you to see it here uh, it's hard to see but it's right in there okay you gotta get that one out And at this point, it still won't come out. You have to remove the speaker, um, the assembly that has the antenna, cables and all that stuff, Bluetooth and whatever. So take out the screw here at the front of the speaker. Remember where the screws go again because they're not all the same. And some of them are pretty specific. Okay, now this ribbon, it's a ribbon, it's connected here, but it's stuck on with two-way tape. Just, you can peel it right off. Just do it slowly. 
Now remove a couple more screws that were hiding in there, just one. And uh, we're going to have to unplug these antenna cables. Actually, we're not going to need to unplug them. Just move them out of the way so you can get at the screw that's holding this uh, little assembly here together. It's about three or four screws. Just remember where they go. Um, you want to get all this properly when you're done because um, you don't want things dangling or clinking around in your Mac once you're done. And the CD-ROM is going to come right out. Okay. So there it is. That's a CD-ROM, DVD-ROM, whatever it is. You can see you had to remove the screws to get that up in order to get the CD-ROM out. Now this caddy is a bit universal. So this the front part of it makes it a little bit too big for my MacBook. So I have to remove it. It is removable. Just remove all these screws from the bottom. And then you'll be able to take out that front piece that you don't need. If in your case you get that. You might not. Or it might fit as it is, but for me it doesn't fit. I just said doesn't and didn't at the same time. I don't know if you caught that. So take out all the screws on the caddy. It's an extra step that you probably won't need to do, but in case you have a caddy like mine and it doesn't fit, you can remove this front plastic part here. Now, I've never taken apart a caddy before, so um, at this point I haven't realized that there's a screw underneath the tape there that has all the instructions. I'm about to realize it though, you can skip this part. And I moved on to a couple other screws first. And I still haven't realized that there's a screw there. I'm about to peek in there and find out. At this point, I'm starting to clue in. Duh. Okay, there we go. Lift up the little tape a little bit. And there's a screw. And there we go. Remove that piece. And it's going to fit like a glove. And just put it all back together. And put all the screws back in. And insert the hard drive and put this little front piece on it's to make it uh, more snug it's just a little placer and attach the bottom screws
And we're actually almost done here. Kind of. Hey, um, I forget why I removed that again. I think I was double checking that it's, you know, everything's good. I kind of felt uneasy or something. But uh, it's fine. Everything's okay. Just make sure it's lined up properly. The hard drive is not flopping around or anything. Which it shouldn't be. These are pretty exact. Uh, I mean, they're made exactly for a laptop hard drive, so. Now keep in mind that there's links in the description below for uh, the, these caddies and also for uh, the hard drives if you're looking to buy a hard drive. I might have, uh, yeah, there's a few, a couple links down there. Just double check. I will also put a link to uh, the solid state hard drive that you probably can see through here. It's my 120 gig. Um, it's uh, It's been good. I've had it for almost a year now and no problems, so. Okay, so now just put it in snugly. Oh, also I forgot to mention that connector I'm about to plug in doesn't come with the caddy. That's an adapter that you have to pull off your old CD-ROM. The, the CD-ROM you pull out will have it. You just unplug it and plug it into the, the caddy. I'm not sure when I did it, but I did it at some point. Now just line all this up. And start uh, putting the screws back in. MacBook Pros or MacBooks in general are pretty easy to work on because if something's out of place, you'll know it because everything inside these things is meticulously placed. So it's hard to uh, put something in the wrong place. People complain to me all the time that uh, they always strip the screws in the MacBook Pros. Um, a lot of people do, and it's true. It's because it's very small screws, and sometimes people use um, any screwdriver they find laying around, which is not a good idea. The screwdrivers I use, I've never stripped a screw before, ever. Not one. I use... Um, uh, very good screwdrivers there. If you do this for a living or a hobby, I'd recommend just skipping all the junk screwdrivers and spending the money and getting these ones. I'll put a link for them in the description below. They're, uh, I think the, I think it's pronounced Weha, the brand, and uh, they're professional precision tools. If you do this for a living, if you, it's a one-time thing, don't even, don't bother. They're, it's not going to be worth it for you. But if you do it for a living or you're a hobbyist or you just play around with technology all the time. I would highly recommend it. Just keep putting all the screws back in the way they were. Make sure everything's snug. And then reattach the bottom plate. 
and the battery connector of course don't forget to plug the battery back in So let's start with the big screws first. These are the long ones. Okay, now we're gonna boot it up. There's one more step here to do. When you first boot it up, it's not gonna detect the drive. We have to create a partition in order for your Mac to recognize it. So, we boot it up here. Go to Disk Utility. You'll find that drive there in Disk Utility. You'll see it one terabyte. Click Erase and go to macOS extended journaled. I accidentally clicked encrypted. You don't want encrypted. Well, you might, it's up to you if you want encrypted. I didn't want encrypted. So once I hit erase, it's gonna it ask me for a password. I hit cancel and I'm going to just go to um, the first option there. Just journaled, macOS extended journaled. Click erase. Now, if you don't want to use your entire one terabyte drive as one partition, you don't have to. You can create partitions of different sizes if you would like to do that. I just make it, I'm making it one big backup partition, pretty much. And as you can see now in Finder, under Devices, you can see it right here. Okay, that's it. It's pretty much ready to go. Um, we're going to go here to Options and about Mac, more info, S system report, serial ATA, and you can see both the drives there. I have my solid state and my Western Digital Blue one terabyte. Pretty simple procedure. Um, you should be able to do it yourself. Um, I would recommend, if you're careful, you'll save yourself a lot of money doing it yourself.